Hey everyone and welcome to this week's video. This week I have a piece of walnut that was sent to me by a viewer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to be making a walnut salad bowl and if you stick around to the end you will see all the trials and tribulations and mistakes and how I fixed them and all that good stuff. So make sure you stay to the end. So to explain things a little bit at first, you see some bluish, bluish gray resin there. I started this project a few months ago and I put some resin in uh, a, a large crack. And I didn't like the way it turned out, so I set it aside. It was kind of a daunting task. Uh, so here I am removing that blue gray resin and going to be starting over and using resin again uh, in a different color and try to bring this thing to life. So this was a long process. I know this video is a little bit longer than usual, but it does include all of the ways that I fixed the cracks in this bowl, which were not just one way. Anyway, starting here um, with the Carter & Son bowl gouge. This walnut knot was very dry and very dense and I had to sharpen I would say probably eight times, maybe ten throughout this whole project. This is a good shot of that large crack. Still on the face plate here with the tail sock pulled up, I'm going to be working on the foot. Hey, if you haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Helps me keep making these videos every week. Hit the thumbs up button and the little bell icon so you can get notified and not miss any content. Working on the bottom here, I am going to be turning a mortise and a foot. Carter and Sons skew chisel here. Link to all of the products that I use will be in the video description with links if you want to check them out for yourself. You can really see how large those cracks are. This was a really, really nice piece of walnut. So the uh, first time when I started it and didn't finish, uh, I was kind of worried that I wouldn't finish it, but you get to get the courage after a while. Perfect use for resin, in my opinion, using the Total Boat two to one medium hardener and pure white pigment from Black Diamond. Looking for a contrast between that dark, rich brown 
and the white will hopefully do that. Now, of course, there wasn't a perfect way to do this, at least not one that I was patient enough for. So I filled as many of the cracks as I could and left it overnight. Looks like a mess, but that's what happens when you work with resin. I'm going to turn that resin away, starting with the uh, skew chisel, making sure that the foot is nice and flat, and that the mortise is nice and clean and crisp. For the majority of the resin on the sides, I switched to the Easywood Tools uh, negative uh, rake tip. And just turn most of that away. I still have a bit of shaping to do on the side, which I will uh, do with the bowl gouge still. Using tuck tape here to uh, get a piece of the crack that didn't quite fill with resin. It was in a weird spot. Now I could could pour resin in here now and, and wait. Um, I was a little bit too impatient. I wanted to finish the bowl um, the same day so I didn't want to wait overnight. So I decided to use Easy Inlay. It would match that white uh, pigment uh, really well. So I used the Easy Inlay and some Starbond CA glue in the thin and some accelerator. It worked, it worked great. I was able to turn it within minutes. And there are a few other smaller cracks that I decided to fill as well. Same process with the uh, easy inlay, the star bond, and accelerator. I have a coupon code for star bond if you're interested. There is a link in the video description. It's great stuff. I have a lot of different products. So another mess and I'm going to be turning it away starting with the skew chisel. If you're new to wood turning or new-ish, I'm going to share something that took me a while to get used to, and that is when something you're doing is looks messy like this before I turned off, turned away the resin or the easy inlay. Easy to get frustrated. Um, it's not going to look perfect. It's going to look far from perfect, and sometimes it takes a while. So. Uh, don't give up if you start something and it's and it's messy and you just have to keep going. Well, at least that's how I learned. This is sanding sealer. I use sanding sealer mixed with denatured alcohol. 70-30. So after that dries, I use a Scotch-Brite pad and denib it. Make sure there's no little fuzzies. And using the Axe Abrasive Paste, which I use on 99% of my projects. I do have a discount code for Axe as well in the video description. Please check them out. You'll be glad that you did. And this is the axe uh, polishing step two.
removing the faceplate and we'll start with the hollowing process here in a second. If you turned walnut before, leave a comment and let me know uh, what you thought of walnut. I haven't, I mean, I've turned walnut, but usually I have more maple than walnut. And a lot of the walnut that I use, I use for more of a charcuterie, cutting board type things. So I was very happy to get this piece of walnut. Making sure it is safe before I start with the bow gouge. It was pretty in, ba in, in balance. I was able to get the lathe up to about 600 here. Once I balanced it out even more by taking a little material off, I turn up the lathe and, and I get up to about 1,000. Between 900 and 1,000. Starting the hollowing process with the bowl gouge here. Again, as I mentioned, this is very dense and dry. I was trying to not put too much pressure on the very outer sides of it, so not to knock it out of the uh, chuck and have it go flying. That would be bad. Turning the lathe up to speed a little bit. Changing out the tool rest for the uh, interior curved tool rest. This is from Robust Tools. I get a lot of questions about it. I have linked it in the video description if you want to check it out. It is an Amazon link and I believe at right now it costs around 80 bucks. So there's a link to it if you want to check it out. Just so much easier to do bowls, even if they're not deep bowls. This one is not particularly deep, but it, for me anyway, it just makes it a lot safer and a lot more enjoyable to turn because you're not worrying that you're overextending. You're not having to stop and change the, the tool rest very much. So as usual, I use mostly uh, this Carter and Son bowl gouge and the skew chisel a little bit, but mostly this bowl gouge. It is a 5 8 U-shaped bowl gouge. I'm not sponsored by Carter, Carter and Sons or anything like that. I just really like their tools. Using the calipers to determine the, the depth and the wall thickness so I don't join the funnel club anytime soon. Or at least I don't become a repeat member. <laughs> Finishing up shaping the inside using the air gun and finalizing the interior curve. There are a couple of cracks or um, blemish type areas that I need to fix before I move on. 
So again, I'm going to use the easy inlay process with the Starbond CA glue. This was pretty straightforward since I could take it off the lathe and lay it flat. Made it pretty easy. And a few little cracks that are probably harder to see on camera. But I went ahead and fixed those as well. Put it back on the lathe, still with the uh, curved tool rest. And going to finalize the inside. So of note, and because you see all that dust and I'm sort of covered in it, I do have a dust collector two air filters going and I also have the uh, Air Trend Pro shield on. You can't really see it, but so there it is. So I am well protected. My lungs are well protected. I wish I had purchased the Air Trend uh, shield long before I did, which was a few months ago. It's linked in the video description. It was a a bit of an investment. I waited till it was on sale though. I got it for three something US dollars. So worth it though. Your lungs are definitely worth it. And now on to the Axe uh, abrasive paste. You've seen me use this a million times if you've watched anything on this channel really brings these pieces to life. It's amazing. Works great on walnut, on maple. Uh, last time I used it on a redwood. It's just really great stuff. Easy to use. So onto the polishing paste. And you can just watch the sheen start to really build up. Look at that. Like a mirror. A few close-ups here and then there'll be some beauty shots. I'm happy with the way this turned out. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it and your last walnut project. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like, thumbs up button, and until next week, peace out.